for lawful permanent residents, generally known as having a green card, is made using Form I-485, Application to Register Permanent Residents. An immigrant must apply for Adjustment of Status, AOS, in order to go from non-immigrant to immigrant status. After USCIS approves your application, you are free to remain and work in the country indefinitely with the option to eventually seek to become a citizen through naturalization. Step-by-step -step guidelines. Here is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to correctly complete the Form I-485, Application to Register Permanent Residents, if you decide to complete it on your own. 1.a, 1.c, your legal name is all that is required in this area. Include your current legal name in its entirety. Include both last names if you have more than one. 2.a, 4.c, please include any more names you have ever used in this area. This may contain your given name at birth, your maiden name, the names of any past marriages, any nicknames, aliases, or assumed identities. 5. This is your birth date in the format mm slash dd slash yyyy. 6. You may select your sex right here. 7. This is the place where you were born. You don't need to give your address. 8. This is where you were born. 9. Your nationality or country of citizenship is this. 10. If you have an alien registration number, it is this one. This number can be found on your employment authorization document, EAD. 11. This is the number you registered with USCIS online with. This is only available to you if you have an account on USCIS.gov. 12. If you reside in the U.S., this is your social security number. 13.a, 13.f, your current U.S. mailing address is as follows. The name of the person receiving your letter on your behalf will be listed in 13.a, 14.a, 14.f. For immigrants applying under the Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, Special Immigrant Juveniles, Human Trafficking Victims, T non-immigrants, and Victims of Qualifying Crimes, U non-immigrants, this part serves as a safe address. If you don't want the USCIS to send notices to your house, you should fill out this area. If you entered the country using a passport or other travel document, you must respond to the following questions, 15 through 19. 15. Your passport number is as follows. 16. Include the number of your travel permit if you had one when you entered the country. 17. This is the date on which your passport or other travel document expires. 18. This is the nation that issued your passport or other travel authorization. 19. You should input your non-immigrant visa number from this passport if you have one. 20.a, 20. b, this is the place where you most recently entered the country. If you arrived by flight, the city with the airport is where you passed through the United States. Border and Customs Protection For instance, you would have passed through Customs and Border Protection before arriving at your final destination if you had a stopover in the United States. You should include the city with the border crossing or the city with the closest border crossing if you entered the nation by land or water. Here you may find your most current I-94. 21. This is the day when you last entered the country. 22.A.22.D. You can determine if you were subjected to an immigration officer's inspection here. Become the subject of a U.S. immigration officer denotes that when you previously entered the United States, an immigration officer stamped your passport. You will also list your accepted status, such as F1, student, or B2, guest for pleasure, if you were examined by an officer. You can also discover the code on the U.S. visa in your passport. If you don't know the code for your visa designation, you can define your status using a word like student, visitor, or assily. You will check 22.b to see if you are on humanitarian parole or Cuban parole. You must tick 22.c if you entered the country unlawfully. In any other situation, you would check clause 22.d and describe the situation. Filling out your I-485 online with Simple Citizen may help you if you're unclear how to respond to this query. You may locate the most of this information on your most current form I-94 on the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, website if you can't recall any of it. If you entered the country after April 30th, 
2013, you won't have a Form I-94 in your passport. 23.A. Your I-94 arrival departure record number should be entered here. You can use the aforementioned website to access your I-94. 23.B. Put the admission till date that may be found on your I-94 here. Make careful to include the I-94 date because this is usually always different from the U.S. visa that may be found in your passport. You won't have a specific expiration date if you have a certain status, often students or tourists participating in an exchange program. Your I-94 will instead read D-S4 duration of status, which is the official abbreviation. You should omit the particular expiration date and instead put D-S if your I-94 so indicates. 23.C. You should enter the status shown on your I-94 here. If you are on parole, this may be your class for parolees or admissions. If you don't presently have legal status, you should say so. Put overstay if your I-94's expiration date has been exceeded. You should write EWI, entrance without inspection, if you entered without authorization. If this applies to you, being an immediate relative of a citizen of the United States may prevent you from changing your status. Regardless, if this is your circumstance, you might wish to see a lawyer. 24. In this section, you should provide your current immigration status if it has changed since your arrival. 25.A, 25.C. You must enter your name exactly as it appears on your I-94 in this field. Part 2. Application Category or File Type Page 3 Your eligibility for changing your status is specifically questioned in Part 2. The Form I-797 Receipt or Approval Notification should be submitted with the Form I-485 if your immigration petition has been granted. 1.A. 1. G. The many qualifying categories are shown below. Decide which one relates to you. 2. Most likely, you are exempt from this. Section 245-I of the Immigration and Nationality Act, INA, is an outdated statute that only applies to a small number of persons who entered the country illegally. Visit USCIS.gov to see whether this applies to you. Information regarding your immigration status. 3. You should include the petition receipt number if you have an accepted petition. Form I-130, Form I-140, Form I-360, Form I-526, or Form I-918 are all examples of petitions. The Form I-797 approval notification that USCIS mailed will include the receipt number. Question 3 and Question 4 do not apply to you if you are filing simultaneously, which means that you are completing the petition and the I-485 at the same time. Keep it empty. 4. If you have a petition that has been granted, you should include the priority date below. 5-9. to nine. Only a derivative applicant is covered by this section. A derivative applicant is an immigrant who relies on the petition of a primary applicant rather than meeting their own petition. Most likely, this would be a parent or spouse. You will add the primary applicant's details in this area. Part 3. Details about you in addition. Page 4. 1 to 4. If you have ever submitted an application for a green card, immigrant visa, at a U.S. If you are an embassy or consulate, fill out this box. You can choose to answer question 3 with either authorized, denied, refused, or withdrawn. Don't stress about giving the reasoning for the choice. That is not required. 5 to 7. You must provide the last five years worth of physical addresses in this field. Initially, state your current address. You can enter extra details in part 14 if you've had more than two addresses. Informational material. Make sure the information you supply is as accurate as possible because the USCIS will use it to do a background check. 9.A, 10.B. Your most recent residence outside of the United States, where you have resided for more than a year, should be listed here. You do not need to add it here if you already gave it above. 1118.B, this is also for a background check by the USCIS. Your five-year job history is required. Make sure it is as exact as you can, once more. 
Part 14 is where you may add any other information you may have. Informational material. You should write non or not applicable if you haven't been working. 1922.b. If you haven't done so in 11 to 18, please list your most recent employment, even if it was for less than a year, outside of the United States. Part 4. Details relating to your parents. Page 6. 1.a. 16. The background questions in part 4 concern your parents. On questions 7, 8, 15, and 16, you should select deceased if they have died. Part 5. Information regarding your marital background. Page 7. 116.c. The information regarding your prior marriages is gathered in Part 5. For candidates who are pursuing marriage-based immigration, this portion is especially crucial. The USCIS wants to make sure you are truly qualified. You will disclose details regarding prior unions. Use Part 14 if you run out of room once again. Informational Material Part 6 Details Pertaining to Your Children Page 8 1 to 16. You must provide information about your kids in part 6. The first thing you will do is list all of your children who are still alive. Then you'll give some fundamental details about them. Both stepchildren and adult children should be considered in this. Failure to do so can cast doubt on your relationship if they later decide they wish to move to the U.S. Go to part 14 if you require additional room. Informational material. Part 7. Biographical Details. Page 8. 1. You will include some biographical details in this area. This will enable the USCIS to verify your identification. You will first indicate whether you are Hispanic or not. A person who is Hispanic or Latino is one who is of Spanish culture or background, whether they be Cuban, Mexican, Puerto Rican, South or Central American. 2. You will answer this question with your race. There aren't many categories, so this may be perplexing. A guidance for the USCIS is provided below. White people are those who are descended from one of the indigenous populations of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. An Asian is someone whose ancestors originated from any of the indigenous peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, or the Indian subcontinent, such as those from Cambodia, China, India, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Pakistan, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. A person who has ancestry in one of the black racial groups of Africa is considered to be black or African American. An individual who has ancestry in one of the original inhabitants of North or South America, including Central America, and who still retains tribal membership or community attachment is referred to as an American Indian or an Alaska Native. Any individual with ancestry in one of the indigenous populations of Hawaii, Guam, Samoa, or other Pacific Islands is referred to as a native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. 3 to 6. You must provide your height, weight, eye color, and hair color for the subsequent questions. Part 8. General Eligibility and Grounds for Rejection. Page 9. Part 1. Details about you. Page 1. How to Make a Lawful Permanent Residency Application This paragraph is lengthy. Not to worry, though. This section's goal is to make sure you haven't done anything that would prevent you from entering the United States. Being inadmissible implies that, owing to crimes, immigration infractions, or other circumstances, you would not be permitted to enter the United States at all. You should see a lawyer if you have ever participated in a group that advocates violence. 113.b. You should list any groups, associations, funds, foundations, parties, clubs, societies, etc. that you have participated in in this section. Inclusion of volunteer or religious groups might assist demonstrate to the USCIS officer that you are a moral person. This question primarily asks if you have ever been a part of a violent organization. 1480.b Most of the time, no should be the answer. But you can say yes in some cases. Answer yes to question 17 if you have overstayed a visa. 
Then, in Part 14, you can describe the situation. Informational Material Regarding Query 24.A-24.C Yes, you may also include a justification for your J-1 visa's two-year term in your response. Additionally, you must reveal every arrest. Include them, even if it was an oversight or a small offense. Except in cases where drugs or alcohol were used or if you received. An individual who has ancestry in one of the original inhabitants of North or South America, including Central America, and who still retains tribal membership or community attachment is referred to as an American Indian or an Alaska Native. Any individual with ancestry in one of the indigenous populations of Hawaii, Guam, Samoa, or other Pacific Islands is referred to as a native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. 3 to 6. You must provide your height, weight, eye color, and hair color for the subsequent questions. Part 8. General Eligibility and Grounds for Rejection. Page 9. Part 1. Details about you. Page 1. Funds, foundations, parties, clubs, location for your J-1 visa's two-year term in your response. Additionally, you must reveal every arrest. Include them, even if it was an oversight or a small offense. Except in cases where drugs or alcohol were used or if you received a punishment of more than $500, you are not required to provide your diving tickets. You must include supporting documents with your Form I-485 if you have ever been arrested. You can be rejected if you've accepted public aid. If this applies to you, you should speak with a lawyer prior to sending your Form I-485. Part 9. Providing Accommodations for People with Disabilities or Impaired Ability Page 14. If you require any accommodations for your interview due to a disability or handicap, you must disclose them in Part 9. A sign language interpreter may be present. This part should provide an explanation of your necessity. Part 10. Statement of the Applicant Page 15. Congratulations, you nearly finished. You may sign Form I-485 here. In order for them to know that you comprehend what you are signing, you will also verify that you can read and understand English. Along with it, you'll add your contact details. Part 11. Contact Details, Certification, and Signature of the Interpreter. Page 15. This is where the interpreter will sign if you needed one to complete Form I-485 since you don't speak English. To obtain a green card, you are not need to speak English, but you will require an interpreter for your USCIS interview. Part 12. Contact details, a statement, and a signature. Page 16. An attorney would mention their credentials here. Given that you have been following this step-by-step -step approach, you will probably leave this blank. Part 13. At the interview, sign. Page 17. At the USCIS interview, you will sign this part. Don't fill it in until after your interview. Greetings and congrats on finishing. The Form I-485 and any necessary supporting papers, such as Forms I-130, I-693, I-864, etc., must be submitted to USCIS in order to make an application to become a lawful permanent resident of the U.S. If the petitioner is a member of your direct family, you may submit all the required documentation and documents at once. What does Form I-485 have to do with it? A person in the United States submits Form I-485, Application to Register Permanent Residence or Adjust Status. Submit an application for legal permanent residency. These instructions will occasionally refer to Form I-485 as an Application for a status adjustment or as a request for a change. When ought I to submit Form I-485? The general information on when to file Form I-485 is provided in this section. Principal Candidate Generally speaking, if you are submitting as a recipient of an immigrant visa petition, such as Form I-130, Form I-140, or Form I-360, you cannot submit an adjustment request until USCIS has accepted both your petition, I-360, and an immigrant visa, I-360. 
the number is now accessible. However, a few immigration categories permit you to submit Form I-485 before. USCIS accepts your petition. This is referred to as concurrent filing, if doing so would result in. You have a visa number that may be used right away, and you satisfy all other filing criteria. Check out the supplemental instructions for information on when you may submit Form I-485 for each category.